and I got a call saying we've been stopped, but it's like, so I'm like kind of feeling, oh, I want to sit down, you know. I'm already bored of my that's my finger. Well, to meet 
meetings tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Welcome and come on down for that. The fellowship area that Sarah Cornell is running has a service to the back. Uh, and you're happy to get out on the 28th of October. So please sign up for that. One thing that didn't get left, left off the announcements was that the food pantry has selected October to collect toothpaste. So anyone who can bring in some toothpaste for the food pantry, it's not something they can purchase with food stamps, and they appreciate our donations. Any other announcements? Hearing none, let's turn on the screen. Uh, Lois asked me to remind people that some of the things in the uh, fellowship area are still available after service. Anybody's interested in taking a look at them? A couple of things that are available, uh, my road bag, <laughs> my briefcase, and there's a box of, of uh, a milk, well, milk box crate of music that I'm getting rid of this. We're kind of downsizing everything and kind of small if she would like some of it, she's going to look through it. So that's not for sale either. <laughs> Anybody who's looking for a 90, or 2017 Chevy Colorado, see me after this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you are able, you at least rise. We'll be in a worship with the order of confession. <laughs> Blessed be God, the one who forms us, Jesus, who bears the cross, the Spirit who makes our joy complete. Amen. Amen. Let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sin. Steadfast and faithful God, you, you have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others. For the harm we have caused, known and unknown, forgive us. For the unjust demands we place on others and your creation, forgive us. For the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor, forgive us. Lead us back to you and set us on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The loving Christ, God's justice stretches the all all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are already and always forgiven. Amen. We'll continue with the hymn.
In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who are to hear their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. 
But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush, and so that it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind, and the sun again beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint, and asked that he might die. He said, It is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, Yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, You are concerned about the bush, for which you did not labor, and for which you did not grow. It came into being in a night, and perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than 120,000 persons, who do not know their right hand from their left, and also many animals. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. God. The psalm this morning is Psalm 145, verses 1 to 8, and we'll read it responsibly. I will exalt you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every, Every day, day I will bless you, you and praise your, your name forever and ever. ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. There is no end to your greatness. One, One generation shall praise your works to another, and shall declare your power. I will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and all your marvelous works. They shall tell of the might of your wondrous acts, and I will recount your greatness. They shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing joyfully of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Our second reading is a reading from Paul, from Philippians to the Philippians, chapter 1. For to me, living in Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to part and be with Christ, for that is far better, but to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. So that whether I come and see you, or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of their salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well, since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Why are you here idle all day? 
And they said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, these last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day in the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. She was Korea from South Korea. And I tried, I did origami, but nothing. All the very small. So yeah, you too have, and I'm so glad you're here. Thank you, thank you so much. Awesome. And, and Bob and, and, and Ben came a little later. So I'm going to give you four instead of two. So each of you get four. Don't let, don't let it. children have only two, and some of our uh, other children have four. You think that's fair? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that's fair, Art? <laughs> no. No, right, right. John, do you think that's fair that you have two and they have four? No. Good. <laughs> am, I, am, I, am I allowed to share? You're allowed to share. Like, would you, you like one of mine? Wow. <laughs> so the gospel story the pastor just read, wonderfully, I might add, is all about a man that, that is actually going to, he has people coming into his, his great vineyard, and he has people that work for him. And so they come, and they start working, and they agree on their wage, and man says, just fine. That's great, that's my wage. And then later on, more people come. And they come, 
and they work all day too. And then again and again and again it happens, right? And so at the end of the day, they go to get their wages. And when they go to get their wages, they give the first people that came first their wage, because that was what was agreed upon. But when the second and third groups of people came, the man gave them the same wages, gave them the four instead of the two. Was that fair? Was that fair? No, people were not happy about that at all, especially the people that started the day and had worked all day long in the hot field. So that's the parable. And how amazing that Jesus tells this parable to us today and to our children and our adults and our pastor. How, how fabulous is this, that this comes to us today? Because the message that comes from this, the warning that comes from this, is God takes care of all of us. And he gives us all good things. And all, all good that things we need. And all that we need. And we should love that and enjoy that and be thankful for that and not be worried this is a lesson for me <laughs> not be worried for what other people have and what God has given them enjoy what we have enjoy your little photographs <laughs> enjoy them and just remember that God loves you and gives you all the things that you need let us pray Heavenly Father we are thanking you today as we always do for our children <laughs> of our church and for all of our members. And please help us to remember every day to be thankful to you for what you have given each of us. And all God's children say? Amen.
And coveting is the problem between believers in relationship with one another. It's not that others receive God's blessings and we don't. The problem is that they get the same as we do, and doggone it, they just don't deserve it. <laughs> they're less worthy. They're late arrivals to the grace of God, or they're just plain worse sinners. They just don't deserve the same gift we do. Well, God can give them something, but not the same. You know, we have a tendency, as this parable aptly illustrates, to covenant and to be resentful of others and what they receive from God. And the owner of the vineyard, he asked those who have worked the longest and the hardest for him, am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? You see, the point here is that God's grace, God's mercy, God's forgiveness is God's to give away as God so chooses. And as a direct result of this, we covet God's power to forgive and God's control over who is forgiven and how. The uh, lectionary creators match this parable with the story of Jonah, who has run away to avoid delivering the message of forgiveness that God has sent him to proclaim to Nineveh. And Jonah complains as well. I knew you are gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, ready to relent from punishing and surely this cannot be for the people of Nineveh. Yes, this parable of Jesus is about coveting, about our frustration with the grace of God. Not as it applies to us, but as it applies to others. Now, this parable is also a parable about order out first and last. You know, when I was a kid on out in the playground before we had computers and everybody was out in the playground, the one thing you hated was being the last pick for a team. Yeah. It wasn't nice being the last. But it was better than not getting picked at all. But the complaint of the first is that you have made them equal to us. And so maybe it would be better said that the last will be first and the first will be the same. Think about that. You know, the reversal of order or expectation of our sense of justice and hope is a central piece in the New Testament. Jesus says, whoever wants to be first must be last, and servant of all, in Mark 9, 35. So much for human thoughts of greatness. The Revelation tells us that Jesus is first and last. Who tells us that we need not fear when we pass through death. For all will find their home in God. I think the question that, that we as Christians need to ask ourselves is why do we work in the kingdom of God? To increase our own worth in the kingdom? Receiving more grace than others? To stand out and above others? To respond to the love of God known by God's grace and given to us that sometimes for our whole lifetimes, while others seek and go through life without it. You know, in my first parish back in Western Pennsylvania, I had a young man who was tremendously active in the church. 
He sang in the choir. He was the Sunday school superintendent. He was a lector during our worship services and assistant minister. He was active in most of the ministries that we had in that congregation. And for years, he tried to get his father to be part of our Christian community, but to no avail. And as his father lay on his deathbed, dying from cancer, he asked if I would go in and visit with him, and I said, sure. And one day that I was there, his father said to me, will you baptize me? And I said, sure. And I baptized him in his home. And not there soon after, he died. And his son's response was, that was not fair. He squandered his life away. I tried for decades to get him to accept Jesus and to be part of the Christian community. And at the last minute, he says he's found God. It's just not fair. And I said to him, can't you rejoice that finally he realized God's call to him that you had been trying to share with him for ages? And maybe fairness isn't the response. Maybe thank you. Thank you. What a wonderful way to put coveting in its place. And then to be able to rejoice with all the saints of God. Amen. 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 Amen.
who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, and the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Remembering the caring and generous works of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. God who is gracious and merciful, teach your church to invite and welcome all. Lead us to be grateful for the blessing of community. Challenge your church to choose equity and compassion over judgment. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God who sends the wind and the sun, you know every worm and bush by name. Help us remember that even the humblest parts of creation are precious to you. Show us how to best care for the earth and its creatures. Merciful God, receive, receive our prayer. God who is ready to relent from punishing, impart your compassion and wisdom to legislators, judges, members of the military, and law enforcement. Give them the courage to serve their communities in times of uncertainty, stress, or exhaustion. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God who saves, direct your people who are tempted by evil ways. Protect your children from calamity and disaster. Strengthen all who are incarcerated. Encourage all who are in despair or pain of any kind. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God, who is slow to anger, may we boast about the goodness of Jesus with the confidence of Paul in prison. Inspire us to find abundance in whatever vocation we are called to in the world and in service of and to our congregation. Merciful God, receive, receive our prayer. prayer. Other petitions we should offer at this time, please raise. Yvonne, Susan, Vern French, people in Morocco. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. God who abounds in steadfast love, we give thanks for the saints called to the kingdom of heaven. United with them in spirit, hold us firm as we labor in this life and look to the life to come. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and the prayers of our hearts, trusting you in your compassion, made known through Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Peace, Molly.
Let us pray. God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus invites you to this table. Come, eat, and live. Please be seated.
he made this Christmas before him, but everyone is invited to come. Our order is open, and um, there are empty glasses that you can receive the wine, or there's a free filled glass with a lot of colored wine. If you need a gluten free uh, wafer, we have those. You just need to let me know as we come for the communion of the South. The Lord of Christ be in the you. The Lord of Christ be in for 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 you. Please rise for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Oh.